Jim Nance set to join us, brought to you by Vineyard Vines. Yeah, we got to see Jim gave us some gifts there, Vineyard Vines. He's got a uh, store that opened at Pebble Beach last Wednesday and uh, steps from the putting green across from the lodge. He is Mr. Pebble Beach. He's Jim Nance. Hello, friends. How are you? Friends, I'm well. I'm uh, very blue, though, because I had all kinds of plans for us this year during the AT&T, and now I hear that the trip is scratched. Yeah, yeah. The Jim Nance breakfast, the the par three contest that McLovin won. Uh, yeah, we were we were disappointed that we can't join you out there, Jim. We always appreciate uh, the hospitality. Well, that means McLovin gets to hold the belt for another year, which is hard enough to accept. <laughs> but yes, we, we, uh, we might have to organize something on the side, just a boys trip out to. Uh, to Pebble Beach and, and come hang out and do a little bit more than we did tournament week anyway. So I like that. I'm gonna miss you. I like that. How yeah. about a how about a sleepover at Jim Nance's hey, house? Hey, yeah. Hey, now we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Tell me how the uh, Manning Brady backyard visit happened. You know, it's kind of last minute. I I, I got uh, word that that Peyton wanted to do Tom uh, this. Oh boy to be his, uh, you know, in many respects, I'm there. sure his biggest, biggest show, right? I mean, it's uh, the two of them together. I mean, it would be gold. But they were going to be together for an event at Pebble Beach. I got a call. I was on the East Coast. I wasn't there. I was at Hartford doing the Travelers Championship. And they said, hey, would you mind if we did this? And, of course, we're glad to have them. It was pretty funny, and then you know they were they were trying to figure out the password, the code for your uh, your gate there. I I thought it was uh, they they had some fun at your expense. Well, there were some good lines in there, and I don't know who's responsible for them, but it was very clever. And all I knew for about five months was that they had shot it on the property and up by the par three where McLovin, of course, is the king. <laughs> and uh, I, I had no idea of all the shenanigans and what they did at the gate, and, and then they let me in on it in December and said, you know, we need you to record a couple of lines. I said, what do I have to do with it? Uh, you'll see. So it was uh, great. got a lot of feedback on it. It was, it was good fun. I was trying to explain to these guys and our audience, when you're up on the podium, when it's chaos, there's so much going on around you, you know, you're interchangeable guests there, there's confetti, you got a time element, you got a producer in your ear, you're trying to ask enough questions to satisfy everybody, then throw it back to the studio. I said that it's always been the toughest thing I've had to learn is to be able to talk to somebody and remember what you're saying and what they're saying, but also somebody is talking to you in your ear while you're doing that. Can you give the audience an idea of what that was like in Kansas City with Travis Kelsey and company? Well, Dan, you have to fight <laughs> for the right <laughs> to play! <laughs> and you almost missed out on that because you were saying, oh, we, we got to go back to the studio, and you just put that microphone in front of Kelsey, and you, as we all know, never give up the microphone in a situation like that. You cannot do that. But I have to tell you, I was insubordinate there because <laughs> they were – you mentioned there were voices in your ear. I had Jim Rickoff, who I dearly love, and I'm sure he had people behind him that were screaming to get off the air. And Jim kept saying, as I was talking to Patrick Mahomes, this is it. This is it. Now, I'm looking past Pat, and I see Tyron standing there, Tyron Matthew, and I see Travis – Travis already tipped me off that he wanted to say something. Now, what am I going to do? They've just won the AFC Championship. I'm going to blow these guys off? So, I mean, I wasn't exactly sure what the rush was, and I'm really good at following instructions. But on this one occasion, I think I said something about I've got to get it back to the studio. Yeah. But, hey, guys, congratulations. And Tyler just said thank you. And then, of course, Travis just went off, and it made the whole thing great. How many times have you done that at the Super Bowl where you're uh, hosting? Uh Seven. I've done 16 AFC championships. I've done 34 NCAA championships. I've done a lot of regional finals. I've done, because I've been at the Masters 34 years, but 32 years I've been there for a completely different ceremony down at Butler Cabin. 
But Travis's moment was pretty <laughs> darn cool. That was that was different. Actually, I have to confess when when he grabbed the mic, and you know I held on for dear life, as you said, because you got the network in your hands. When he started to say the word fight, the F seemed to take a little longer than normal. And all I'm saying is, you know, a lot of thoughts racing through my mind. And I, I did think somewhere in that millisecond, there was a synapse or something that was telling me, oh, my gosh, I just disobeyed. I was insubordinate. And I walked right into the F bomb right here on national television. We're talking to we got through it. Uh, we're talking to Jim Nance, of course, the lead play by play voice for the NFL and CBS, the Masters in Final Four. I know you sign off. Fox has the Super Bowl. Did you feel mixed emotions here with Tony Romo's contract situation? Didn't really think about it at that point. Okay. Obviously, it's something that I'm well aware of and Tony and I talk about all the time. And I certainly hopeful prayerful that it'll work out and I, there's nothing much more i can say than that i i wish for him the, the best that he can do whatever that might be but he is loved at cbs by a lot of people no one more so than than yours truly and he knows how i feel about it but i'm not going to apply any pressure yeah. and um hopefully this will be something that we can do together for a long long time you know we're just getting started we're three years into it uh, as far as saying goodbye to the football season, look, I'm grateful we get to do the AFC championship. It's a big deal. And, and, you know, we alternate every third year with the big game. We just had it this past February. And oddly enough, next year we're going to actually come up in two years' time because we made the uh, switch, the trade with, with uh, NBC so that we move up a year. This all had to do with the Winter Olympics. Yeah. And NBC having the Olympics and the Super Bowl falling on the same year. NBC didn't want that, so they proposed that we trade out the Los Angeles Super Bowl that we had, that we possessed for Tampa Bay. So we're going to Tampa next year, and NBC the following year will take what would have been our Super Bowl in L.A. I've said this before to this audience, that that I know Tony gets a lot of credit, and he's unique, and people love that style, and it's fun. But he puts you on an island. Like, your ability to be able to grab what he leaves for you and then get back to the play in time to call it in real time and then allow him to go sort of rogue a little bit with his thoughts, it, it's, it's not lost on me, Jim. And I'm, certainly, I'm certain that there are other play-by-play -play voices who look at that and say, that's a real, real talent to be able to do that and make it feel seamless. And that's what... If Tony would leave, you, you know, there are very few people like you in this business. And to be able to do that, and I think that you complement each other so well, and it just, it, it's a unique sound. And it's rare when we have unique sounds when it comes to play-by-play -play and color. Well, that was really nice what you said, Dan, you know, how much I respect you and uh, your observations, and you understand the business. But I got to tell you, when we're on the air, it's two guys who happen to have a very strong friendship who are just talking. Now, if I'm playing catch up a little bit on some of the play by play calls, I don't really feel it. It doesn't feel off balance to me. You know, I can think about Pat Summerall, who was a tremendous friend and mentor to me early in my career. We overlapped for 10 years together at CBS. And we all remember Summerall and Madden. But I also remember Summerall and Brookshire. And I know you do too. Yeah. yeah. And Pat, Pat had a very special gift for making his analysts shine. And they were transitioning at CBS from Brookie to John. This was in the early 80s. And there was a really incredible bond between Pat and Tom. They did the old, what became the, the, the uh, Inside the NFL show. They did that together. I mean, they were, they were blood brothers. And someone on a writer asked Pat, he said, hey, how do you feel about this? You're going to miss Shire on, on Sunday afternoon? And, and Pat said, you know, in his way that he would, could stretch out a sentence for about 10 minutes, but he said, um, I'm going to miss him on Sunday, but I'm going to miss him more on Saturday night. They had a chemistry, yeah. and they were up to some hijinks back in the day. 
Uh, but, you know, the whole weekend, the process of getting ready for the games, is this is what he was saying, you know, it was a joy ride. And I know we had it with John, too. I mean, what a fabulous team that turned out to be. But when I think about my time in three years of doing games with Tony, it's a continuum on Friday into Saturday into Sunday. All those days are the same. At some point, the audience drops in and happens to be listening to us. But we're having just as much fun at practice on Friday, at dinner on Friday night. Same thing on Saturday. We're never in a rush. We're not always talking about football. I would say that might be, you know, 20% of the time. We're laughing and having just a heck of a time for uh, 48 hours plus, and it happens to spill over into the broadcast on Sunday. Jim Nance, the uh, Jim Nance line by Vineyard Vines. That store opened at Pebble Beach last uh, Wednesday and just steps from the putting green across the lodge. Of course, uh, Jim has uh, outfitted us with Vineyard Vines in the past, and uh, we wish you luck with that, obviously. A great company, and uh, uh, thanks for the friendship over the years. Uh, and we truly are sad that we won't be able to go out and, uh, and play golf in your backyard and have breakfast out on the, on the veranda there. All kidding. Honestly, it was the highlight for me that most uh, recent years having you guys and some hang time with you guys, but we'll do it again sometime. And the friendship, it's uh, both ways. It's treasured with you and and uh, all the Danettes. And I uh, hope we can chat sometime during the NCAA tournament. Thank you, Jim. We will do that. That's uh, the great Jim Nance joining us on the program. McLevin is holding up his hardware that he won. You won it. I mean, I, I was horrible that day in the par three. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.